Today I'm going to show you how I pull these little paintings into Photoshop, manipulate them, make them better, and then I go ahead and print them on Hannah Mueller William Turner paper, and then I will emphasize them with gloss. So I have, I just took pictures with my iPhone. I didn't use a DSLR or anything, so the first thing I need to do is to um, come up to image mode, convert it to 16-bit, and change my convert to profile to RGB 1998. Click OK. Go to size. I just want to see. I'm going to change this to 300 dpi, and yeah, that's way too big. For this one, I think I'm just going to do 10 by 13. Click OK. Same thing with this one. Let's convert the profile to RGB. Let's go to image size 300 and 10. Click OK. And same with this guy. Change it to 16 bit. Convert to profile, RGB, image size. And it doesn't really matter, I find, for these to convert it all like this. I feel like, you know, the final tweaks that we do in Photoshop actually work, work quite well. So, and you might be wondering, okay, well, why would you paint these watercolors and then bring them into Photoshop? Well, because I am so accustomed to digital art and manipulating images in Photoshop that I really always feel the need to do this. And additionally, when I paint these, because I like them glossy, I like them to be varnished, um, a high gloss, it's, um, I can't seem to locate the watercolor varnish that is available. And when I do find it, for instance, on Amazon, it's like $55. So this allows me to paint on watercolor and actually print it on Hannah Mueller paper, the textured paper. And then I don't have to worry about the paint being affected by the varnish. So it's all kinds of different reasons. Um, I think I'm going to start with the little bear because this is going to be a gift for my daughter's girlfriend who just had a little baby boy named Banks. So I'm going to duplicate my layer and I'm going to do retouching just like I would do if this was just a photograph and not a painting. And I just, yeah, you know, it's, it's like once you have the ability to digitally alter images, it's really hard to go back to traditional painting and just accept all the flaws that perhaps are existing in the image and that's why I like to do it this way. So it's kind of the best of both worlds really. You still have your actual painting and then you also have the ability to retouch it so that all of your little mistakes or errors or whatever can be fixed. So I've done quite a few of these now. I make gifts for new moms and family and friends like that and I just find that it it's nice to come in and apply the digital portion to the traditional artwork so all I'm doing is I'm just kind of smoothing out some of the little parts of the painting that distract from the overall image just using the patch tool and I'm just kind of evening things out this way and you don't want to go too crazy but at the same time it's nice to get rid of some of the issues now I just use a basic watercolor paper for this nothing fancy it wasn't arches um, this one however is on oh no this one's not on arches this one is on arches and you know just the way the paint blended and everything clearly is so much better like this one you can really see the texture in the paper that's just driving me crazy because it's a piece of hair haha <laughs> same with these little guys 
So yeah, it's it's really helpful to have an additional skill set beyond just the traditional. I don't know how many of you are actually into more traditional styled art, but it's really super fun to combine them all together, I find, anyway. And this little bird. We're gonna crop this because I'm gonna make a little card out of it, but I'm just coming in and doing this anyways. And if you hear my cat meowing, she's in a mood these days. So I apologize in advance. Okay, back to our little bear. I'm going to start with a Dodge Burn layer from my retouch set. And just at 1%, I'm just gonna lighten up the areas where perhaps the paint was a little too dark on the background. We just want the light to be a little more even, like so. And this is usually where I take it from, you know, looking like just a basic, really poor painting, because this is a really crappy one. But I knew that I just wanted to come in and manipulate it in, um, in post. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and flatten this and I'm going to crop it into the proper. And this is going to be a 5x7. And that's just the format that I want. It's not actually creating it, turning it into a 5x7 just yet. Something like this. Go ahead and flatten it again. So, <clears throat> so a lot of this can be manipulated using the mixer brush. So we're going to head over to the mixer brush and I'm going to leave my settings pretty much the same. So 45, 45, zero mix and 25 on the flow. And I'm not choosing sample all layers for this. Let's zoom in and we're just going to start cleaning up parts of the painting where they weren't very perfect, I guess is a way of putting it. So just using my mixer brush to come in and kind of soften some of the areas. We don't really want to do it too heavy because you don't want to lose that painting look. So I'm just trying to come in and even out the paint. And those of you who are familiar with the mixer brush, this should be pretty easy stuff for you. Those of you who are not familiar with the mixer brush, you can always head over to my teachable school and learn all about it there. So I'm just going to fast forward through this because it's going to take a little bit of time and I don't want you to have to spend too much of your day looking at this kind of boring technique. So see you in a bit. Okay, so that's just a little bit. Now I'm gonna go into my dodge and burn and I'm going to grab a regular brush, but it's gonna be my hair brush again. And I'm gonna pull up my flow to about 30. And now I'm just gonna start adding some hair texture, specifically in the shadow region.
okay? Now we're going to grab our white and we're going to use a regular soft brush and we're going to start adding some highlights. And for those of you that paint with watercolor, you know how impossible it is to come into a watercolor painting and add highlights after you're finished. You have to prepare for that, either use a mask or you have to just not paint the areas that you want to be super light. So that can be a challenge sometimes. But if you just pull it into Photoshop, then you have a lot more control, if you're like me anyways. Yeah, I'm not always a super big fan of watercolor characters because I find it, it can be a struggle. And also I'm not that good at it. But the nice thing about using this technique is that once you print it on your fine art textured paper and then you varnish it, it does not look like you did anything in Photoshop. It's pretty cool. So we're just going to highlight these letters. like that. Highlight his little toe beans. Like so. Go back to our burn. Now we're going to start embellishing the blacks. Just creating more shadow. Yeah, I find it super difficult to go from digital creation to traditional because you just get so used to being able to undo or change really quick some of the stuff that you're working on and then all of a sudden you realize, ah, I can't do that. So this is kind of why I started doing this um, because I really... Well, I'm sure you guys are probably like this too, but you just really need that extra kind of control, I guess you can can call it. But I know I do. Like I'm far too much of a control freak to just settle for what I create traditionally and not want to manipulate it. But that's just me. So let's just take a look at the before and the after. So do you see how we've really managed to change that? And I'll show you something else that I do as well. I'm just going to go ahead and merge these two together. And then I'm going to grab my clone stamp and come in and just just start repairing some of these places that aren't perfect. Because you can. <laughs> and it's all about because you can, guys. Like, I'll probably catch a lot of flack from some traditional artists for doing this, but art is art. It doesn't matter how you create it or what techniques you use or 
what you consider right or wrong. This is just something that I do for fun anyways. It's not a serious endeavor. It's really just fun. Again, like I said, you don't want to get too overly um, crazy with perfecting it because you still want it to look like traditional artwork. Go ahead and flatten it. And now we're just going to come in and start accentuating the eyes and stuff. So let's take a look here. So by doing this, we're just adding a really tiny bit of highlight to the eyes just like you would if you were, you know, drawing Procreate or traditionally. Little highlight on his nose. Again, these are all the highlights that really are difficult to create when you're painting traditionally, especially in watercolor. And now I'm just going to reduce this because it's a little strong to about 10 and I'm just going to come on the other side and just kind of create that eyeball look, you know, add the highlights that actually make it look like there's reflections down here too. So as if there was a water line on little dude's eyes. And it's entirely up to you how heavy handed you want to go. But see how that just made his eyes look a little less water painted, but it still looks pretty cool when everything is all said and done. I'm just going to do a different layer and now I'm going to come in with a black brush and do the same thing. So just accentuating the area of the eye so that they really stand out as far as shadow and highlight. You could come in and embellish the eyelashes more if you wanted. Just working on the shadows around his little face. Don't be afraid to use liquify too. If you feel like your, your guy or your subject is kind of crazy and not looking perfect, that's what I love about using Photoshop to kind of fix things that maybe weren't perfect initially. And I'll show you what I mean. So now I think what we're going to do is come in, I'm going to always work on different layers just because it's really difficult to really control now this is a good place to use some fur brushes if you have them like Aaron Blaze has some really amazing fur brushes and I would recommend looking into those. I'm just gonna pull 
pull up. Add a couple hair strokes. Like so. And sample another color, add some more. Like so. And you could add some of those in here. this down to around there and I'm just going to lightly come over top and just kind of try to blend the shadow area with the lighter parts and yeah this will soften some of the texture of the paper but that's okay like I said we're going to use Hannah Mula um, William Turner I believe and then that way it will still look painted okay um, I do think I want to add a little bit of that color to his snout like so Okay, let's go ahead and flatten. Now another Dodge Burn layer and we're going to focus on creating these highlights on his name. I would probably push this up to like 38 because we're going pretty heavy handed on it. Our goal is to make it look a little more 3D. And so consider your light source and then just make sure you follow through with the exact same direction on the light for every other one. like so. A little more highlight on his little finger and a little more highlight on the actual heart. Like so. before and after so you see how we've added that but what I want to do is add some darkness under him for a shadow because I didn't really do it dark enough like that 
that. Maybe just a little bit more around here. Okay, I think it's super cute. I do want to make the inside of the S a little darker. Just as long as you can still read his name. Banks. It's a different name, hey? Make it a little darker around his eyes. It'll make him look cuter. Yeah, because I don't know about you, but like the before on this was so pathetic that I was just going to toss it. And then I thought, mm, well, I could, or I could try to put it in Photoshop and see if it's salvageable. And I think it is. Okay, so before and after. So now we've really adjusted this. I think it looks pretty sweet. Go ahead and flatten. And um, the next thing that I'm going to do is liquefy. So um, just duplicate your layer, go into liquefy. Now this is where you can really perfect your drawing or your painting because, you know, sometimes it's not always easy to make everything look the same in a painting. So I find this to be a lifesaver. You can really come in and fix things. Just gotta be very careful not to screw it up, but it's Photoshop, so even if you do, you can just undo it and move on, which is so nice. I think that's better. It's kind of cute, hey? I know this nose is a little crooked, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be El Perfecto. Good enough. So let's just look at the before and after. So that's before and that's after. And I do want to fix his little mouth because I don't feel like it's a very good accurate representation of what I was attempting to do. So I'm just going to make his actual little mouth a little less thick. Now you could technically do this in liquify too. Yeah, 
This is not always the best tool in the world to use. It's a little inconsistent. I'm going to try using just a brush. I'm going to go into black and just try to focus on getting those lines less blurry. Like that and around the nose too. So what's fun with these is you can make little greeting cards, painted greeting cards, which I do often. And and then you can actually, you know, make it so that they can just remove the greeting card portion and put it in a little frame and then they have a little tiny 5 by 7 painting, which is fun. And I definitely lost the individual dots in this side, so I'll just add it back so that it doesn't look too weird. It's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it looks a little bit better, like so. Um, I think that's good. I still, like I said, I wanted to maintain the painting look about it. So now I'm going to just come into my hue saturation and we can play with the coloring. So let's go to our yellows. So you have the option of reducing the yellows, increasing them, changing the tone of the yellows. You know, you could technically go blue for the bear if you wanted to. If you didn't want it too green, because that's kind of green. That's definitely green. That's kind of nice, actually. It's pretty much the color I had it, I think, is probably better, because, yeah, you can see that it just took a little bit of the yellow away and turned it a little more red. Um, we can go into the blue and see if we can't adjust that blue. I think that looks better. And that's what I like too, because then you don't have to worry too terribly much about, you know, messing with uh, mixing paints and all that other stuff. Yeah, that's better. Click OK. And now what I'm going to do is do a blank layer and add a soft light blend mode and come down to like a pink. and make sure I'm on my brush and really reduce this down, but I'm going to just add a little bit of pink to his snout here. Just a little bit like that and maybe a little bit on his fingers, a little bit maybe on his toe beans. And this is where you can really have fun, like you can really come in and manipulate it and make it look totally cool. So yeah, I've just added some red. I might actually go into my yellows and just add a little bit of yellow to his snout. Like that. And this is soft light, so it will actually lighten the image up a bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of soft light to the top of this heart. I still think I want a little bit of more orange on his snout. Like that. That's cute. That's not too bad. And let's go before and after. So we've added, you know, some kind of cutesy little bit of color 
I think it looks pretty sweet. And go ahead and flatten. And um, what I'm going to do is, believe it or not, I'm just going to attempt to do a curves adjustment and see if we can't just make the background a little bit more contrasty. I'm going to come into my blues and I'm going to pull this down, pull this up a little bit, but I need to go into my greens because I do want this color in it as well. Something like that. And now all we do is grab your black brush and we're just going to paint it off our little guy. You could do it the other way as well. You could um, just invert it and then paint the rest of the effect onto the background instead of taking it off of your little guy. And then usually I'll reduce it down to like 10 or 8, something like that, and then I'll just make sure that the entire area around him and the outer edges of his little body are actually not terribly affected. Now what this will do is it will take that color that we just laid down away. Like that. But you can also just do a color blend mode and then sample this color and pull it up and you can just paint it kind of back around your little guy so that it's not so obviously different. And it's just a quick easy way to blend the colors together. Like so. like that. And go ahead and flatten. And I should, really should save it, so bear with me one sec. I'm going to go into curves and start playing around. with the lighter areas and just invert that and now we're gonna just paint that light back on our little guy like that. The reason why I'm making the cheeks a little bit lighter is because I want to give the illusion that he's got fat cheeks and so if they're lighter then they pop out, right? Just a little around his head. So I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think it kind of saved it because it was a pretty sad little dude before we brought it into Photoshop. And I think that's pretty good. Go ahead and flatten, and now I'm gonna duplicate my layer and try to push this into, um, let's go glow, because it'll add a little bit of contrast and glow to the harsher texture of the paper and the bear. Okay. So hit cancel, and now I'm going to go down to contrast and color, which is right here. 
So looks totally whack, right? And that's okay. So we're just going to open up this one here and I'm going to push the lightness a bit. And that's about it. Click OK. Because you're going to reduce the opacity on the, the overall so that you still have that. And it's up to you how far you want to go. But do you see how it just really pops everything out a little bit? I'm going to go ahead and flatten it, duplicate it again. And now we're going to pull it into exposure four. So by default in exposure, as always, it just takes the last filter that you used. But I think I'm going to start with films aged for a difference and just start seeing what resonates with me. I actually kind of like this one and it's, that's too dark. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, none of those. Let's go back to print. Definitely want to maintain the saturation um, just because it's, you know, we worked hard at creating that. And pull the blacks up a bit because it's a little too much. That looks pretty good. But I definitely want a vignette. Like that was one of my main points of bringing it in. I really wanted to make sure that we got that vignette happening. It's just a matter of how much, right? And also, you can play with the placement. So if you want the light to be more on the top and less on the bottom, then you can place your vignette in a different location. Let's just hit the space bar. We can see the before and the after. I think that looks good. Click apply. Now I didn't adjust the grain in that filter, but there's so much texture in this anyway, it doesn't really matter. One thing I do want to address, however, I'm going to use my spot healing brush are just the dots like these white little dots. We really don't want those in the image. So this just really helps you control maybe the little white spots that we missed during the painting process. You know? It's definitely cheating, I'm not going to lie, but, but it's pretty fun. I do think we need to add a little bit there, here too. Okay. And if you wanted to, you could go in overlay blend mode. And I know we're in the severe greens, but if we add in a little bit of this more cyan, that's the wrong one. Let's make sure we have the right one. And this is really green. I think I'd like to go a little bit more gray. Just kind of 
marry it all together. reduce it. And this was the overlay blend mode. You could try to go like multiply and see how it looks. I don't personally think that looks as good. I'm going to add a mask and just brush off some of it. Just a little too saturated up here. But I think the rest is okay. I'm going to do another layer with a color blend mode. Go back to my gray and just make sure that we even the screen out a little bit. Something like that. Merge these layers before and after. And now what I'm going to do is stop this video and I'm going to show you how I will paint it. And this is the print of the little bird. I added a little bit of just hand-drawn foliage around it and I'm going to go ahead and apply the gel and the varnish. And this is the result of our little Banks card, little mini painting. And that's what that looked like when it was all said and done but you can really see the texture and the gloss, which I like a lot. And this is what the flower looked like. I did the same thing, added some hand-drawn elements behind the main painting, and I will apply all of the stuff now. So here are my final two little paintings. They are totally done now, and I'm going to frame them and hang them in my bathroom. And what's nice about this coating too is that you can actually hang these in a bathroom and not worry about condensation from the shower. But yeah, these are just some fun little paintings you can do if you're into this type of thing.